Good morning, everyone. I mentioned the other day that I use an uploaded image of my cookie cutter as a guide when I'm designing. This helps me figure out the size. If I wanted to put a word in here or a design for a PYO, paint your own cookie, then this helps me to make sure that I'm getting it the size that I'm wanting it at the end. <clears throat> so all I did was trace my cookie cutter on a piece of copy paper using a nice dark, uh, you can use a Sharpie. The nicer and darker these lines are against the contrast of the paper, the easier that will upload for you. It doesn't have to be perfect because again, you're only using it in the design process and at the end you're gonna delete it off of your canvas. But I press the upload button here. I took the picture, it's on my device. Select from photo library select that picture that I took and I'm going to remove the background. I'm going to toggle that all the way to get rid of as most, much of the speckling as I can and get rid of the inside as well. Next. Next. And then you would name this and save it. I already did that so I'm going to Cancel that, because I already saved it in mine, but I'll show you then what I'm gonna do. Then you're, that's gonna automatically pop up in your images. I'm gonna choose that, and I'll go ahead and get this guy too to show you what I'm using it for. Insert them. And it's not going to pull in the size that it is in reality. It's gonna pull in some random size. So you'll want to select that, edit, unlock. You can either use this unlock button or you can use this unlock one on your screen. And I'm going, so I'm gonna unlock that so I can change those. And I want it to be, the width is going to be 4.25 wide. Or excuse me, that's 4.5, let me fix that. 4.5. And my height is 3.25. Now I'm gonna lock that corner so that I don't accidentally change the size and shape of that. Since I know that this is only three and a quarter inches wide, I'm gonna go ahead and size him way down to make sure he fits in there. I wanna turn this since he's up and down. And you can see then for design purposes, making sure he fits within the borders. I always give myself a decent border around to allow for wherever my frosting lands on the cookie. This is the actual cookie cutter and wanna make sure he fits on there. And that does. Now, let's say I wanted to do a word. I'm gonna do the same exact thing. Text box, just pick a font there. And let's say I wanna say, hello, then I'm going to, maybe I'll do this one this way. And I wanna make sure that that looks good, fits in there, allows for whatever border I wanna put if I wanna do something around it. So again, just using that for design purposes. So I know that these two fit well within here. I'm gonna, you can move it off to the side, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of it just so it's out of my way for the video. Shape, so I'm gonna bring in a square. This will be my stencil square. So I want to edit the size of that to be 5.5 inches, five and a half inches. And for the video, I'm going to turn that gray. And I also want to move that to the back so that these items can come in front of it. So I'm gonna Go ahead and actions. I'm gonna duplicate that square while I have it. So we'll put him over here. Hello, I need to move to the front, edit. Arrange, send to the front. So now I just need to simply draw a box around them, align and center. And then actions, I would attach this. So that one is done, ready to be cut. This one, I'm going to edit, align, center. 
And this one I want to go ahead and duplicate because I want to show you something. So actions, duplicate. And I'll show you here the reason why you will frequently see me recommend that you always attach this like I did him. You can make this stencil one of two ways. You can either attach it, like I'm going to do with this one that's selected. So that's attached, that's attached, those are ready to cut. The other way you can create a stencil, and a lot of people will do this, instead of attaching, you would slice that. The reason I don't do that typically is because it creates more work. Now that I've, th this was done in one step. After it was centered, all I had to do is attach it. This one, since I sliced it, let's see, slice. Now I have to get rid of the extra pieces. That's two extra things I had to do. Get rid of those, delete. So that was three steps. Now, if I want to use this on a different project later and I need to change the size of it, I'm going to have to come back in and hit undo Where's the end? there it goes brought them back brought the hello brought the hello so that's six of those for put them back in there that's seven eight and undo the slice nine that's nine extra things i have had to do before I could move where it was, before I could change it. So it just makes a whole lot of extra steps. Here, if I wanna come in and change this, all I have to do is detach it. Now, I can move it, I can size it, I can do whatever I want to it, change it, reattach it, cut it again. So that's why I often recommend that you use the attach rather than slice at the end. But there again, that is how I use an uploaded image of my cookie cutter in the design process. If you have any questions, place them in the comments.